what was once used to keep soldiers awake out on the battlefields of Europe to one of the most dangerous substances a human can get addicted to. In this video, we're going to talk about methamphetamine, how it was first synthesized and how it became what it is today. But before we start, please press the like button and subscribe. Also, leave a comment and tell us what you think about today's topic. Methamphetamine, also known as meth, ice, or crystal, is a highly addictive stimulant drug that temporarily increases the level of certain chemicals in the brain, such as dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. Once this drug is taken, your body releases neurotransmitters by binding to and stimulating the release of dopamine and norepinephrine from the nerve cells and by inhibiting the reuptake of these neurotransmitters, which increases their levels in the brain. These chemicals are responsible for regulating mood, energy, and attention. Unlike cocaine, effects can last for up to 12 hours depending on how it's used. The real danger is the brain's reward system, which can lead to intense cravings for the drug, and with continued use, the brain's chemistry can be altered, making it difficult for the user to feel pleasure or happiness without it. Prolonged use of methamphetamine can lead to serious physical and psychological consequences such as heart attack, stroke, psychosis, paranoia, and cognitive deficits. Regular use can also lead to addiction and dependence, making it difficult for users to quit and increasing the risk of relapse. There are four main stages of experiencing meth. The high, tweaking, crash, and withdrawal. During the high, the abuser often feels aggressively smarter and becomes argumentative, often interrupting other people and finishing their sentences. The delusional effects can result in a user becoming intensely focused on an insignificant item, such as repeatedly cleaning the same window for several hours. The high can last for 4 to 16 hours. A methamphetamine abuser is most dangerous when experiencing a phase of the addiction called tweaking, a condition reached at the end of the high when methamphetamine no longer provides a rush or a high. Unable to relieve the horrible feelings of emptiness and craving, an abuser often loses his sense of identity. Intense itching is common and a user can become convinced that bugs are crawling under his skin, unable to sleep for days at a time. The tweak is then followed by the crash, which happens when the body shuts down, unable to cope with the drug effects overwhelming it. This results in a long period of sleep for the person. Even the meanest, most violent abuser becomes almost lifeless during the crash, which can last for one to three days. The last stage is the withdrawal. Often 30 to 90 days can pass after the last drug use before the abuser realizes that he is in withdrawal. First, he becomes depressed, loses his energy and the ability to experience pleasure. Then, the craving for more methamphetamine hits and the abuser often becomes suicidal. Since meth withdrawal is extremely painful and difficult, most abusers revert. Thus, 93% of those in traditional treatment return to abusing methamphetamine. The drug was first synthesized in 1887 by a German chemist named Wilhelm Lawson. Lawson was attempting to synthesize ephedrine, which is a natural stimulant found in the plant ephedra, but instead he created a compound that would later be known as methamphetamine. Lawson's synthesis method was not practical for the large-scale production of the drug, and the compound remained relatively unknown and unused until the early 20th century. It wasn't until 1919 when a Japanese chemist named Nagai Nagayoshi revisited Lawson's synthesis method and was able to create a more practical method of synthesizing methamphetamine. Nagayoshi published a paper describing the drug's effect and suggested that it could be used to treat a variety of conditions including narcolepsy and asthma. The drug was quickly adopted by the Japanese medical community and was used to treat a variety of conditions. It's worth noting that the method of production of methamphetamines has evolved over time and today, the drug is typically produced in illegal laboratories using a variety of chemicals and methods. This includes the one-pot or shake-and-bake method, which is a relatively simple and portable method of production that can be easily set up in a small space like a car or hotel room. Although it might seem like the very complicated process to make meth, there are ways to make it from commonly found products like batteries, cleaning fluids, and antifreeze. During World War II, the drug was widely used by both the Axis and Allied powers. In 1919, methamphetamine was used as a nasal decongestant in a treatment for narcolepsy. The drug quickly gained popularity in Japan and was widely available over the counter. When Japan entered World War II, the government began to promote different forms of meth among soldiers as a way to increase their stamina and combat performance. The German military quickly caught on and also started to use methamphetamine, particularly during the early years of the war when it was still on the offensive. The drug was distributed in pill form and was used to keep soldiers awake during long periods of combat and to increase their aggression. The German military even produced its own methamphetamine, which was called Pervidin. 
It was distributed to soldiers, pilots, and tank crews, and it was estimated that 35 million tablets were distributed during the first six months of the war. Although Pervitin was first marketed as a performance-enhancing drug for military units only, it was available over-the-counter and was widely used by the German population, particularly by truck drivers, students, and housewives. The drug was also distributed to school children to increase their concentration and study habits. As the war progressed, the German military became heavily dependent on Pervitin. The use of Pervitin had a significant impact on the performance of German soldiers in the outcome of the war. The drug allowed soldiers to fight for longer periods without rest, and it also increased their aggression and willingness to take risks. But it also had a significant impact on their health. The drug's side effects included anxiety, paranoia, and hallucinations, and prolonged use could lead to addiction and long-term health problems. In 1941, Pervitin was banned by the German government, but the drug's production and distribution continued on the black market until the end of the war. The use of Pervitin during World War II highlights the dangers of using performance-enhancing drugs and the importance of understanding the long-term consequences of drug use of any kind. The Allied powers were also aware of the use of methamphetamine by the Axis powers and began to research the drug's potential military applications. The United States began to produce its own methamphetamine, which was called Benzedrine, and distributed it to its soldiers, particularly during the Normandy invasion. British soldiers also used the drug, particularly during the Battle of Monte Cassino. The methamphetamine or meth industry is a significant global problem, with the drug being produced, trafficked, and consumed in many countries around the world. According to the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime, UNODC, the global production of meth is estimated to be in the hundreds of tons per year. The meth market is highly profitable, with the drug being relatively cheap to produce but sold at a high price on the streets. Although the street price highly varies on the purity of the product and location, prices can even go up to 1,000 US dollars per pound. The UNODC estimates that the global value of the meth market is in the billions of dollars per year. Methamphetamine is primarily produced in countries like Asia, Latin America, and North America, with the largest meth-producing countries being China, Mexico, and the United States. The drug is trafficked to many countries around the world, with the largest markets being in North America, Europe, and East and Southeast Asia. However, it's important to note that the size of the meth industry is hard to quantify as most of it is illegal and underground, and there are no official statistics available. Also, the meth market is constantly evolving and it's difficult to have an accurate picture of the scale of the problem. The illicit production and trafficking of meth not only fuels organized crime and corruption, but it also causes severe social and health problems. The use of meth is associated with a range of negative health consequences, including addiction, psychosis, and cardiovascular problems, which put a strain on healthcare systems and communities. There have been many large seizures of methamphetamine around the world in recent years, as law enforcement agencies have stepped up efforts to combat the production and trafficking of the drug. Here are some of the biggest meth seizures of all time. In 2019, authorities in the Philippines seized 1.6 metric tons of meth, with a street value of $125 million in a warehouse in the capital city of Manila. In 2018, Australian police made the country's largest meth bust, seizing 1.6 metric tons of the drug with a street value of $904 million. In 2017, Mexican authorities seized a record-breaking 30 metric tons of meth with a street value of $1.2 billion in the state of Michoacan. In 2016, U.S. authorities seized more than 2 metric tons of meth with a street value of $6 billion in the largest meth bust in American history. In 2015, Thai authorities seized over 900 kilograms of meth with a street value of $40 million and the largest bust in the country's history. In 2012, Chinese authorities seized over 12 tons of meth with a street value of $1.2 billion in a warehouse in the city of Xiamen. These examples demonstrate the large scale of the meth industry and the importance of international cooperation to combat the production and trafficking of the drug. It's also worth noting that these numbers reflect only the seizures that have been reported by the authorities, and it's likely that a significant amount of meth is still being produced and trafficked around the world. The only legal drug that comes close to real methamphetamine is desoxin. Desoxin is a brand name for the drug methamphetamine hydrochloride. It is a central nervous system or CNS stimulant and an appetite suppressant. It is a Schedule II controlled substance, meaning it has a high potential for abuse and dependence. Desoxin is primarily used to treat Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, and obesity. 
It works by increasing the levels of dopamine and norepinephrine in the brain, which helps to improve attention and focus, reduce impulsivity and hyperactivity in individuals with ADHD, and suppress appetite. Desoxin is a prescription drug and is only available by prescription from a licensed healthcare professional. If you liked today's video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, as this would be highly appreciated.